Aloha artists, Miss Maggie here. Today is our last art class before the winter break and I thought we would make something that you can give to a friend or family member as a gift. I was also thinking about all the trees that people are putting up in their homes this time of year and many of these Christmas trees were actually cut down months ago up in the mainland US and Canada put into a container, put on a truck, put on a ship, and spent weeks on the ocean coming all the way here to Hawaii so that some of your families can take these trees and put them up in your home. And of course, oh, they look beautiful once they're decorated, but I was also thinking, what native trees native to Hawaii might have the colors of the season. And one that came to my mind was the Ohia Lehua with its beautiful red blossoms and beautiful green leaves. And I was thinking, I actually have friends who have taken an Ohia tree in a pot and decorated that in their homes as a Christmas tree too. Since there are so many ways to celebrate the season, let's create a holiday card that uses the Ohia Lehua. Okay, here are the supplies that you are going to need. You are going to need one large drawing paper, and that's gonna be really useful. And we're gonna use our watercolors today. And since it's watercolors, we'll need a brush, We'll need a paper towel, we'll need water. Remember, put your water in a container that does not spill easily and be careful about this near your technology. You're also going to probably need a pencil, Sharpie, and eraser, though mostly we'll be painting. And then finally, you might, this is optional, but you might want a scissors and any other scrap paper that you have around. There's a couple scrap pieces of paper, and here's a piece that I actually cut out of a grocery bag. But brown paper like this from a grocery bag, I bet you have some of that at home. That could be useful too. And so the scrap paper and the scissors are optional, but primarily what we need is your large drawing paper. Watercolors, brush, napkin, water, and pencil, sharpie, and eraser. Go get those supplies and meet me right back here. So today, since we are making a card that you can give to a friend or family member, we need to take our big piece of paper and fold it in half. You can make your card this way, horizontal, long, or vertical, tall, Either way it works, but one way or another, we need to fold it in half. So take it on your table and line up those corners. Make sure those corners match and then take the rest and press it down. Hold your hand here while the corners match and then press down over this way, over that way, and then you got your card. Okay, so I'm actually going to do two so I can show you a couple different ideas. So I'm going to do one that's vertical and one that's horizontal. If you're doing this kind, you want it so that it is open on the bottom and full on the top. If you are doing the vertical one, you want the fold on your left hand side and open on your right hand side, just like a book. Your right hand, it's the one that you put over your heart if you're doing the Pledge of Allegiance, that one is where you want it open. Okay, those are the two cards that I'm gonna show you how to do today. You pick which one is your favorite. Next thing we need is our paint. So, when we paint, we need to stop and think, right? First thing is to think where are you going to paint first? And so I am going to start with the blossoms. 
and then I'm going to do the branches and the leaves. And so I'm going to think, where do I want those blossoms to be? This one, I'm going to leave up here blank and have my blossoms reaching up. This one, I'm going to leave down here blank and I'm going to have the blossoms reaching down. You decide for yours. That way, if I have a blank area, I could put a greeting in there, a word or some other detail that will help create the card. So next, I stopped and thought about where, what color? Well, the blossoms, we're going to start with red and then we'll add in greens and browns, maybe a little bit of purple and blue. We'll see about that. And finally, the most important one for this project, what stroke? And so remember, when you hold your brush, hold it like a pencil, hold it by the metal part. Make sure it has a nice tip on it. Give it a hug. Let it have that nice point. That is going to be very important today. And so now I'm going to do that red. I need a bunch of water in my red. And so I'm loosening that red and getting it nice and bold. I want a lot of paint in there. And so that is going to go well. So now how am I going to do these blossoms? If you look right here, I have these red blossoms going out and then I have the branches and the leaves. I'm going to do it like that. And so I'm going to think where are my blossoms going to go and I'm going to go stroke, 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 stroke. See how they're all coming from one spot and I have a lot of strokes there quick and they lift up. And so I get it from thick to thin there. I'm going to do another one over here. Stroke, 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 stroke. Maybe a little bit more. Ooh, yes, more color in there. I'm going to do one here. And here's one. And I decided I was going to leave down here empty. I'm putting them in other spots, making sure they're bright and red. Wonderful. Now for the horizontal one, I was going to leave the top part empty. So I'm going to do my blossoms reaching up to that empty top part. Ooh, that's a nice big blossom. Maybe a couple together. Sometimes you have Ohia Lehua, that group together on a tree. And sometimes there's like a little one next to a bigger one to there. I like that. Let's see, where do I need another one? Here. I'm deciding how I want them to be. I like how those ones are close together and of different sizes. And this one doesn't have enough though, right there. And this one needs a big one there. And I'll let that one be a small one that's next to it. And I keep grabbing more paint. I don't want too much water. That's looking pretty nice. Okay, there are my blossoms. They're kind of all spread out all over the place, but now I'm gonna turn it into the tree. I'm gonna wash my brush, dry my brush, and I'm gonna take some green. But you know what? Green gets pretty boring when it is just green. I'm gonna do some green that has some yellow in it. Hmm, my yellow is still dirty. So I'm going to use that dirty part and clean it out afterwards. I'm taking that yellow plus that green. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to decide where do these branches start? Whoops. And I'm going to have them come down from the flowers and they're going to connect sometimes to the other plants. And Sometimes they might just stay their own plants, but a lot of times ohias connect up to others. Maybe that one connects to there. That one seems like it needs something else. Hmm. I 
think it needs another blossom. One there, and I'll do one there. Okay, a little bit of that. But here's the thing. The branches, they go from green to brown. As they get bigger, they turn brown. And so you can have it so that those branches actually turn bigger and browner as they go. I'm going to do that again on this one. Let's start with that yellow green. Comes down a little ways, comes down, might connect. Oops, see over here, these ones will connect. Connecting, connecting. Oh, doesn't have enough paint though. Need some paint on there. Then maybe this one doesn't connect yet. Okay, got that. Now, I did green. Let's add the brown. Keep going with the brown. There we go. Ooh, that's looking interesting. But it's definitely missing something, isn't it? It needs more leaves on that ohia. So I'm going to take more green. And ohia leaves are small and round, and they like to be grouped together. And so I'm doing lots of leaves all right next to each other. Every brush stroke is its own leaf. And I'm doing some of these leaves with blue and green together. And some of them are just green, but make sure that you are mixing colors because that is just what makes things more amazing is having different greens in there. So I've got blue and green and even the part that the branch turned brown, oh here grows leaves even on that part. And some of them are starting to pick up some of that brown, but it looks pretty cool just like that anyways. Oh wow, yeah, that's starting to look like an ohia tree having those little leaves on there. Oh yes, that makes me happy. It feels like a Christmas tree, but it is also just a part of our native rainforest. Isn't that wonderful? Okay, now this one. I'm going to do that blue and green together and do some little leaves. Every brush stroke is its own leaf. And sometimes I need to drop in a different type of green. That's too much of the same kind of green. I'm doing some yellow green over here too. Sometimes those leaves end up overlapping a little bit and looking like a bunch of leaves. There's really no wrong answer here. And I might need some more ohia growing on this one. What do you think? Stroke, 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 stroke. Stroke, 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 stroke. Ooh, that is fun. But yeah, it needs some more right there. So how do we do the flower again? Wash my brush, dry my brush, take the red. And stroke, stroke, stroke. Oh, it looks great when that brush is dry but full of a lot of paint. I'm choosing where they should go. Just a couple more. And then with the green, they either connect up with another branch or they make their own. And then finally, those wonderful little leaves. Ooh, this is so exciting. One thing I like to add sometimes for Ohia is a little bit of gold dust. Well, what it actually is is the pollen on the ends of the petals, but a tiny bit of yellow. See how I'm using just the tip of the brush? Tiniest little dots. And that little bit of pollen is what spreads between the flowers and helps pollinate them so that we can have more ohia seeds and more ohia trees, of course. And so that also just gives it a feeling of shimmering, doesn't it? It's like that little bit of gold. Ah, oh, to nature it is gold. 
How special is that? Okay, now, the next thing is we have some empty space on our cards, right? There's a couple options of what you can do here. One idea I had was that I'm going to have an ornament hanging from my tree. And that ornament, I'm going to put a special holiday message in it. And the other idea is that I could just put my holiday message right here in the empty space. So let's see both ways. First, the ornament. How do I do that? I'm going to do a circular bulb ornament. So I'm going to take my brush with just water and draw that circle. So I'm drawing that circle. Oh, you know what? I want it over here a little bit more. There we go. And I'm going to fill it with water. Filling it with water, filling it with water. And actually, you know what? I'm going to leave a couple little spots without water. Tiny little bit along one side. So, filling it with water, making it so it has a nice circle to it. And then we're going to drop a color in. I'm going to do my bulb red. And I put the red in where it's wet, following around the edges. I want the edges to be the darkest, edges to be the darkest. And of course, you don't have to do this, but it might be fun to try. And then let it flow around a little bit. Oh, cool. Huh. It's like a red ball. Now, how do we make that actually look like an ornament? Well, it needs to hang from the tree, right? I'm going to take a little yellow, maybe a little orange on there, so it looks even more like gold. And I'm going to draw the little part that hooks onto the tree there. There we go. I've got that. Maybe it needs a little bit of darkness there. Great. Now, all I need to do is write my message inside there. But it's too wet for that. I'm going to have to wait for that to dry before I can write the message. Okay. Hmm. Anything else this one needs before I'm done? I think it does need another blossom here and maybe there. That is what I wanted. Great. So this one, I'm going to let dry before I do anything more to it. But this one here, I'm going to do a little bit differently. I want the words right across here. I think I'm going to have it say Nele Kaliki Maka. You could have it say that. You could have it say Happy Holidays, Merry Christmas, just I love you family. Whatever makes sense for your family. Here are some ideas of what you could write on your card. You can even pause the video here so you can get the spelling just right. Mele Kaliki Maka. Merry Christmas. I love you. For my family, happy holidays. This might be useful for writing inside of your card too. And so I want it along here. And I could get a ruler to draw a straight line, but I'm going to do this instead. I'm going to take a curvy line. And that is what I'm going to write my words on. That way I'm following something, but it doesn't have to be straight. And so Mele Kolikimaka L E L E. I'm making them light so that it will be easy for me to hide that later. K A L I K I M a K A. I ended up with extra space, so I'll put an exclamation mark there. Wonderful. That will work. Great. So I figured out what my letters are going to look like, and now I can sharpie them. Or I could also try doing it with the tip of my brush. You decide what makes sense for you. Okay, for the brush, remember, give it a nice tip. Hold it like a pencil on the middle part. Choose your color. And I'm going to do red. And I'm 
going to go over my pencil lines carefully using just the tip, my brush held high. This takes a lot of focus. And before you do it, double check that your spelling is right. Okay? Same thing with Sharpie. Mele, M-E-L-E, Kalikimaka, K-A-L-I-K-I-M-A-K-A, exclamation mark. Yes! me happy. You see how I really focused while I did that? I didn't even talk. Okay, that one is all done, except those pencil lines. I want to erase them, but I better let that paint dry all the way first, huh? Okay, how about this one? I want to write on this one, but it's also still wet. Whew. This one's still wet, that one's still wet. I can't call them done yet. So, I need to stop and wait. But that sounds boring. If you found some other scrap papers, then let's make something out of them. Let's use the same idea, or maybe you have your own ideas. And if you don't have any scrap papers, that's all right. Skip ahead and see how we finish the project when your art is dry. So. If you have some scrap papers, a couple things you can make are little cards. And also gift tags. I made some on brown shopping bags. This piece here, I'm going to cut out into a leaf shape. The previous one, I did a circle, but a leaf is actually simpler because I folded the paper in half and then it's sort of like cutting out a heart, except it has two points. And I'm gonna paint Ohia on it and so, wouldn't a leaf shape be perfect? I wrote to and from. I'm not sure who it's to yet, so I'll just do that for now. But paint those beautiful ohia. You know how to do that now. Or maybe you have some other idea of what you want on there. But I bet you're a pro at those ohia, so might as well try a little bit of that one more time, even if you're combining it with something else. Why not? And so I can also make mini greeting cards. Maybe you have a bunch of people you need to give something to. Maybe you have someone who you want to give a gift to and you don't have anything for them yet. Make them something. That is always the most special thing to get something that is made by someone. Wonderful. So you can keep using scrap paper and even if that's pieces of grocery bags to make wonderful things that are going to brighten people's days around the holidays. And so Make those cards and those tags and whatever you want while you wait for your art to dry. Mine is close to dry, but not quite. So I'm gonna wait for those last finishing touches. Okay, artists, I had to be patient to wait for that to dry, especially for this one here. When I put my hand on here, it isn't only dry, but it doesn't have any cold dampness to it at all. That's the best. And this one didn't take as long. So if you had to wait to do some of your last touches, I hope that now yours is completely dry. So if you had any pencil lines and then wet paint over it, then now I am going to erase that and I'm not smudging any of that paint. Oh, that makes my life so much easier and I don't have to worry about all my hard work getting messed up. This one, I don't have any pencil lines, but I wanted to put a greeting in here. I think, hmm, I was gonna write happy holidays. You could write whatever you want, but I know what I'm going to do because it's a bow and so it'd be easiest just to put one word in there, I'm gonna put the word joy. And so I'm going to practice deciding how I'm gonna put those letters in there. J O Y. 
Whatever your family's traditions are, I bet we could all use more joy right now. Hmm, I could paint that or I could do a Sharpie line on it. I think I'm gonna do this one with Sharpie. Okay, carefully on my lines, J O Y. There we go. And the last part is I can see a little bit of pencil marks in there. Gently, gently erase. If your paper is a little damp still, erasing isn't going to work. It's going to mess up your paper. So be extra gentle with that. But here are my two final cards. I hope you have a fantastic card for your family or someone else who's special to you and maybe even some other wonderful and fun pieces as well. So finally, here is your reflection question. What part of today's project did you like the most and why? Also, what was an idea you had on your own while making your art this week? Okay, remember, clean up your area, dump out your messy water, clean up your paints, need some cleaning in here. That's gonna take a moment. And also put everything away. And remember that you have the inside of your card to write something special for whoever you're giving it to. I know it is going to brighten their day and fill them with joy. Okay. I can't wait to see you all in January. Have a wonderful winter break. Ahoy ho!